ओके नमो ज्येष्ठाय च कनिष्ठाय च नम पूर्वजाय च पदजाय च नमो मध्यमाय च पगलभाय च नमो चरण्याय च बुद्धियाय च नम सोभ्याय च प्रतिसध्याय च नमो क्षेम्याय च नम उर्व्याय च खल्याय च नम श्लोक्याय च वसाय च नमो वन्याय च कक्षाय च नम श्रवाय च प्रतिश्रवाय च नम आशवेनाय चाशुरधाय च नम सूराय चाभिंदते च नमो वर्मिने चरुने च नमो बिलमिने च कवचिने च नम श्रुताय चुत सेनाय चोर टाइम chanting so good i am tempted to finish the whole rudram huh? the train is moving very fast very nice jeshtha cha means the one who is the eldest jeshtha kanishtha means the one who is the youngest jeshtha is shirdi baba kanishtha is prem sai baba jeshtha cha kanishtha cha पूर्वजाय च नव ईच ऑफ देम हेज देर ओन एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस प्रोस एंड कॉन्स एज दे कॉल इट ज्येष्ठाय च मीन्स द वन हू हेज द मोस्ट रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी कनिष्ठाय च मीन्स द वन हू इज मोस्ट पैम्पर्ड डजन डू एनी वर्क यू यू आर इन द मिडिल दट इज द प्रॉब्लम यू गेट इग्नोर्ड मध्यम आय च ओके जस्ट बट इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ The, on a, uh, that was on a lighter note. Jeshtaicha means he is the one that has the utmost responsibility of taking care, and in the context, he has to follow the discipline of the dharma too, and that is dharma raja. Huh? If you look at the story of Yudhishthira, how much he has to stick to the dharma, and when you are when you have that responsibility. you are coming with that responsibility to be an example and that is how life is really about cheshtai cha means when you have the most experience in the organization you take a different role isn't it when i say company organization in the context of your own company then you you really play a different role being a role model and then mentoring people that becomes most important objective then actually doing the work because of the experience that we get jeshtai cha kanishtai cha purvajaya cha purvajaya cha means the one 
who is born before aparajayacha means one who is actually beyond the birth also it says the one who is born later is not the correct the one that is born it can be interpreted in two difference apara means uh, the one who is beyond anything huh? apara <coughs> purvajaya cha aparajaya cha next one is madhyamaya cha right yeah madhyamaya cha the one who is in the middle apagalbhaya cha apagalbha means the one who is very young jaghanyaya cha the one who is born from the middle jaghanya jagha jagha means middle hmm vil illa the middle jaghanyaya cha buddhiyaya cha means the one who is born in the roots buddhiya so if you look at the plants tomatoes come from the middle of the plant what comes from the roots yeah yes. only french fries eh? anything else we can think of <coughs> carrots beetroot yeah let's think about some nutritious stuff huh? okay <coughs> world is all become potato only now nobody eats any other vegetable or fruit right god if you are used to vegetables and the most painful thing is you go to europe like spain there is thousands and thousands of hectares of uh, plastic houses filled with tomatoes peppers and all beautiful vegetables but none of them actually eat those vegetables it is such a pathetic thing and uh, really last trip of mine was really painful i was seeing all these beautiful tomatoes peppers they don't even know how to cook them what do they do they send it to export it to other countries to make money and they are not staying healthy they are eating all these atrocious cheeses and meats and such a human being is so perverted now they just don't have any context okay jaghanyaya cha buddhiyaya cha sobhyaya cha prati saryaya cha sobhya means the one who is born from the earth prati saryaya cha the one who is actually beyond all the different worlds no connectivity to any of these births now all this is talking about so many different ways of creation huh? at very different levels right kanishthaya cha purvajaya cha parajaya it's all about age now and the type of birth so what that also is that we take upon ourselves responsibilities or the birth is based on our own previous karmas some people are born very responsible you can see them they are responsible from a very very young age they take care of themselves and they take care of everybody else around them some people are like earthworms they are sluggish they cannot even take care of themselves huh and but what is saying is in all of these whether it is a jada bharata or whether it is a great evolved soul such <coughs> as yudhishthira god is present in every one cha cha also in that and i salute to him in that that's what it is saying so he is beyond <clears throat> he is in everything that is independent of all these different characteristics buddhiyaya cha sobhyaya cha pratisaryaya cha yamyaya cha kshemyaya cha yamyaya cha means the one who punishes kshemyaya cha means the one who takes care and sometimes they are not both different by punishing you are taken care of also 
Huh? Yeah, how is that? His friend is thinking. Huh? Right? He's thinking. How can that be? How can you be punished and taken care? Is that possible? Not that you know of. <coughs> When mother shouts at you, do your homework, otherwise no food for you. That's punishment, no? But that's also helping you, right? Yeah. Unless, yeah, at least by telling you to do it that way, you finish your homework and you eat your food. Unless, <laughs> what? <laughs> Unless you don't, yeah. Yamya icha, chemya icha means the one who appears to be punishing, but in the context of that, he is also taking care of you. Yamya icha, chemya icha, urvarya icha, khalya icha. Urvarya icha means the one who is in the fields. Khalya icha means the one who is in the gardens. Hmm? There is a difference between the two, huh? Also, fields are temporary. Gardens are much more longer existing. Forests are even more longer existing. So that's that's the again context of age. Urnyaicha, Vasvanyaicha, Shlokyaicha, Vasanyaicha. Shlokyaicha means the one who is praised in all the scriptures. Shlokyaicha. Vasanyaicha means the one who is beyond the praise of any of these scriptures too. Huh? Are you able to understand what uh, what that means? Because no Vedas can, in fact, completely even praise God. He is beyond even any of the, what is described in the scriptures. Because he is not bound by any of these. His attributes are infinite because he is attribute less. How you understand? This is a paradox. When you say there is nothing, it also can mean there is everything in it. From nothing comes everything. When everything goes to nothing, this is the Ying Yang that we talk about, yeah? Taoism. That's what it is actually referring to. Next one is Vasanyayacha, Vanyayacha, Kakshayacha. Vanya means forest. Kaksha means leafless forest. In fall here, everything has fallen. The forests in India have no fall. It's tropical, evergreen. That is Vanya means evergreen forest. Kaksha means the one that loses the leaves and just only the plants standing without any greenery. Kaksha Yacha. Vanya Yacha Kaksha Yacha means what? The one who is uh, with everything all the time, evergreen, but also he has nothing associated with him. Completely given up. Renunciated. Renunciation. Huh? You understand the difference between the two? The one who has everything but yet renunciated. Yeah. The real example is Swami only. Sai Rama. He has everything but he has nothing. In fact, he said, Anatha Natha, the one who takes care of all the destituted, Anathas, right? When he gets a problem, who takes care of him? Nobody. Because he, even he doesn't take care of himself. If he does, why would he be sitting in the wheelchair? Right? He's beyond all of that stuff. He has no context of any selfish attitude. But yet he has all the ability to take care of himself. Vanya Aicha, Kaksha Aicha. Next one is? 
ya Shreva Yacha correct huh? Shreva Yacha Prati Shreva Yacha Shreva means sound Prati Shreva means re-sound <laughs> Shreva is sound and re-sound. How do we know that? Swami says everything around us is reaction, reflection, re-sound. So it's actually the origin is the sound. The re-sound is something that's already existing within you but it's coming out. Action, reaction. Right? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, because if you eat like this, what's happening? There are two things required action. <coughs> Without reaction, there is no sound. Right? Action. But there is nothing to react. So, there is no re sound. Huh? That's is the sound and the re-sound. Sravayacha pratishravayacha Asushenayacha Asuradhayacha Asushenayacha means the one that is fast moving troops. and the one that is moving the rathas ashuradhayacha ashushenayacha ashuradhayacha now obviously at some point you can see i don't even need to explain the inner meaning you can connect to it after going through so many ways it is explained and that's the beauty of this veda mantras is that you don't need to even somebody explain it after you chant and chant and chant and chant the connectivity automatically <coughs> happens right because the substance is referred to in so many ways and yet if we don't have that that's the asushenayacha asuradhayacha means the one in the context of the moving the troops means moving your senses properly asuradhayacha means moving not only your senses but the context of your body mind and the spirit all aligned together is the ratha right hello if you look at a car car has so many pieces to it right there's the tires there is the body there is the engine there is the steering wheel everything is there we have a fantastic engine no wheels what happens your fantastic wheels no engine what happens yeah, you have both but no steering. What happens? <coughs> so can you imagine there is so much of coordination required and the one he is moving all these things in concordance and in coordination. That is what is described as divinity. How beautiful that is. Huh? Hello. Once in a while you guys show up. Good to see your faces too. You should come to Veda classes regularly. Get up early in the morning on Sundays. Come and learn this stuff. Party a little bit less on Saturday nights. Understand? Huh? Yes. When the Nilagriva comes again, I'll explain. <laughs> Why did you go to that right now? Because senses. Oh, now it's a coordination of the senses and thoughts. So what, what this is, is your, your mind and intellect are the engines. Your senses are the wheels. And the steering inside is coming from the driver. Right? So the one who is actually... So the, when, this, when the, you have a fantastic intellect and a fantastic mind the engine and you really don't have proper sensual faculties what's the point you cannot execute on it no action 
stuff is not moving isn't it so you need the faculties which are your senses and you also need the the mind and the intellect but most importantly if there is no proper driver the car can't go to the right place or it won't move properly hello you understand so your inner consciousness is your driver and your senses are the tires the wheels and your mind and intellect is the engine highly powered and the one who is coordinating that that's the one that needs to be driving you should not be driving it's actually very dangerous your head should not be driving your heart should be driving yes if your head's driving and say you're a person driving a car yeah exactly wow <laughs> phenomenal statement he said if the head is driving it's like a drunk person driving the car <coughs> dui driving while intoxicated <laughs> oh man aditya well you are ready to sit here good to go excellent see this is ssc only right what we are learning in ssc is this only that we need to have the proper value system first then what happens is then the car not only will be driven properly it will, will be driven on a highway you will reach the destination properly and you won't get any ticket and you won't hurt anyone on the way ashushenaya cha ashurathaya cha next one is Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to share that? Oh, yeah, it's uh, this should not be tried at home, not by any one of us who drive with our heads. Huh? So, swam. There is this uh, gentleman who actually uh, is a great uh, person that surrendered to Bhagwan, even when he is driving. You know, he was completely surrendered. So there was somebody else traveling with him. I, I, I'm kind of paraphrasing the story here. He said, "I completely surrendered to Bhagwan." Is that so? Really? He said, "Yes." And then they were going down the hill in uh, Kodai Canal or Uti. He left his steering off. He left everything off, and he was sitting like this in the chair. The car was going down the hill, and he said, "Look, Swami is going to drive now." How many of us have the guts to do that? And the car was perfectly going on the road without. even in the curves and everything this person watch the that's why i said don't try it at home this requires a totally different level of surrender and this is these are real things not i'm not making up a story some kind of a you know not a framed up one so when he is driving it is obvious you don't even need to pay attention but the problem is the, with us is this we want him to drive but yet we want to give him directions sitting in the back seat swami do this swami do that swami swami why don't you take a right turn swami say hey, wait i am the driver or you are the driver huh yes very very good yeah, you are all ready for driving now right the driving lessons okay next one is ashushenaya cha shuradhaya cha nama shuraya cha vabhindate cha avabhindate cha shuraya cha vabhindate cha shuraya cha the one who is in the form of shura means hero shura is hero and we are all zeros <laughs> we are all platform heroes in practice zeros that's what swami says lot of platform heroes practice zeros but he is actually platform he is actually both platform hero and practice hero both ha huh? articulation and execution both that's the difference articulation and execution yes swami is a superhero or super zeros yeah <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah we are super heroes <laughs> he is super hero ha <laughs> huh? when it comes to food we are heroes when it comes to actually practicing we are zeros huh he eats that's why yesterday karuna mai ma was saying you know <clears throat> if you eat three times a day you become a rogi if you eat two times a day you are a bhogi 
If you eat one time a day, you are a yogi. Huh? We are all what? <laughs> Too much eating leads to disease. And just eat to enjoy, that is bhogi. The one who actually <clears throat> does it only in, uh, only in the context of maintaining the prana, that's the yogi. Swami hardly eats anything. If you have those that have seen him eating say only this whatever comes with these three fingers eats nothing else but they put lot of food around him he doesn't need it right he is the one who is giving energy to the food why does he need to eat sleep etc so avabhindate cha namo ah, okay suraya cha avabhindate cha varmine cha varudhine cha Varmine means the one who is actually armored. Varudhini means the one who is <coughs> actually riding a chariot. All these are again symbolic in the context of our own self. Bilminecha, one who is wearing a helmet. Kavachinecha, the one who is protecting with a kavacha. Huh? Nothing, no arrows can can penetrate, no bullets can be, it's like bulletproof, kavacham, varminecha, varudhinecha, bilminecha, kavachinecha, shrutayacha, shrutasenayacha, shrutayacha means the one who is uh, praised and famous, shrutasenayacha means the one who has army that is actually praised, you understand? Now he doesn't even need to be praised. He is praised through us. Like when all of you did went and did the chanting at the Rudram here in Sacramento Temple. Man, I keep hearing from everybody how incredible these Sai devotees are. They are chanting Veda like incredible. Not even priests in India can chant like this. This is what you hear. So who is being praised? The Sena. The army is being praised. It's no longer associated. He is now, he is referred to in the context. Man, how do these guys chant Rudram like that? It's all his grace. Now he say, who are we being referred to? Sai devotees are chanting this. Huh? The context is Sruta Sena Ayacha. What is being praised is the Sena now. Not even the, not even the, the one who is now, that's exactly what he means by your life is my message. Hmm? Where did you all learn this? How did you all? It is really, it's a testimony to Bhagavan's grace. It's like saying, oh, Swami is like incredible. He is making everybody independent of their caste, creed, religion, sex, association with any community. And the, the, the awareness, again, Veda is not for chanting. Veda is for awareness. What it does is, after we chant and chant and chant, at some point or the other, the awareness has to be awakened. And it will be awakened. And it may not be awakened in these children as we see it now. But when they grow up, and when they start connecting to, oh, that is what it means. Now the pleasure is incredibly different. Oh, that is what, that is how, that is why my father told me that. That's why my mother told me that. When, when the mother and father tells you when you are young Are chordo yaar kya hai eh? please mom leave me alone why you are bugging me dad come on leave me alone why I should go to this Sai center every Sunday morning are you kidding me <laughs> huh? then what happens this, your father and mother also same way only I was also same way then what happens 35 year old one kid comes into your life even if people tell you don't go to the Sai center you are going. Why? Not because of yourself. You want your children to be perfect. What happened to you when you were young? Oh, you didn't listen to your father and mother. Huh? But imagine this. When your father and mother hear from somebody else. When this is, there is a saying in poem beautifully in Telugu. Putrotsahamu tandriki putrudu janminchinapudu kalugadu. Janula putruni kanugoni pogadaga putrotsahambunadu pundunu sumati. What it says the, the happiness of giving birth to a child doesn't come actually when you give birth to the child. 
But when the people around you come to you and tell, Oh, was that your son that sang like that? Oh, was that your son that danced like that or daughter? Was that your son that chanted like that? Then what do you say? Oh my God, you are very happy. Because that's exactly how God feels about us. No difference. But the level of enjoyment of God is at a very different level. When people are noticing saying these are Sai devotees. Man, they live a life like this. They do so much service. They are into Vedas. They are into this. They are into incredible giving and giving and giving. That's when he feels, Oh, my children. Sruta Ayacha, Sruta Sena Ayacha. No matter how incredible the father is, when the son doesn't get that connectivity, it doesn't matter, right? And the connectivity doesn't, same thing with me, with my life also. Now my father is not anymore. I can actually relate to everything that he said right now, when I was young and everything. But now when we are young, there is something else takes care, takes over our body called <coughs> hormones. <laughs> they don't make you listen to you, listen to father and mother properly. You start listening to father and mother even before you speak. Oh, the same thing again. I know, ma, don't bug me. I know, dad, come on, I know. You're boring. Stop it. I got it. Sounds familiar? Yeah. Sruta Aicha, Sruta Sena Aicha. Okay, let's chant now. This Anvakam is finished now. Namo Jestaya Chakranishtaya Chanama Purvajaya Chaparajaya Chanamo Madhyamaya Chapagalbhaya Chanamo Jadhanyaya Chaputniyaya Chanama Sohyaya Chavatisaryaya Namo Yam Yaya Chakshem Yaya Chanama Yaya Chakhal Yaya Chanama Shokyaya Chavasan Yaya Chanama Vanyaya Chakshaya Chanama Shravaya Chakrami Shravaya Chanama Asushenaya Chashuradhaya Chanama Shuraya Chavabhindate Chanamu Varmine Chavarudine Chanamu Nilmine Chakabhachine Chanama Shrutaya Chashutasenaya Chanamu Next one. Any questions? Comments? Hello backseat people, at least it's about time for you guys to wake up, start learning this stuff, huh? Yes? What? The answer with the hesitation there? Yes? yes? Okay, good. Pull all the rest of the party crowd into this also, yeah? Okay. <laughs> yes, Amma. What's the meaning? Shura Yacha. Avabhindatecha. Avabhindatecha means the one uh, um, Shuraicha. In uh, Veda Pushpanjali it says that. Yeah. The one who the huh? It says the one who destroys the ungodly. The one who destroys the ungodly. Yeah. yeah. Avabhindatecha. Uh, Is there anything actually now, isn't that kind of uh, contradictory? <coughs> huh? Is there anything that is not godly? And how can there be anything that to destroy the ungodly? Yeah, 
the one who destroys things that distract from being closer to God. Avabhindatecha. But Avabhindatecha also means in the context of um, the the one who is the uh, supreme knight, K N I G H T, white knight, Avabhindatecha, the gladiator. Huh? Avabhindatecha also means that. Now you see there is lot of reference to all the wars and fighting and all that kind of stuff in these mantras that you hear. The fighting is actually going on within ourselves all the time. Huh? The one that distracts you away from all that is crucial and important to realize yourself that is ungodly. That's not moving away from yourself is what it is, awareness of the self. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole point of this. Follow the master, face the devil, fight to the end, finish the game. Huh? But anything that is distracting us from being ourselves, that is what is ungodly. Yes? <laughs> yeah, in the context of uh, what it is, is oh, I don't know what I said actually. I have to come let, back. Let the inner self drive you, not your intellect drive you. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let your own self manifest yours, manifest. Be yourself. And there's a, there's different levels to that. But at the end of the day, you have to drive. You have to reach the destiny. And the destiny is from human to divine. That's the road on which you're going. That's the bottom line. Whoever is born has to ultimately merge with God. No question about that. That's the only destiny. But some people choose to do it over billions and billions of lifetimes. Some people say, okay, I got this life only to realize that. Therefore, if you drive with mind, what it does is, instead of keep going on the highway, you're going on the most scenic route, stopping at various wineries and getting drunk and taking rest again. takes much more longer time to reach the destination. Sometimes you're walking, sometimes you're driving, sometimes you take a flight. Depends on reaching the destiny. So many different ways. If you have a lot of time to come back and experience the duality over and over and over again, yeah, take your time. Yeah, some people say, yes, I take my time. What's the big deal? I am on vacation this life. Yes, next life you come back as a fly or an insect or a bull or a pig or a frog or whatever, depending upon where your mind has taken you. And when you come back as a frog, Man, you are going through all the pains of the frog again. And then you come back. You, this is the most incredible thing. Why go through all this nonsense? Does any fool want to go through this nonsense of coming back and back and back? After so many lives you accumulated good karma, you get the birth of this human body. It's the golden opportunity to realize God. Because in this human body, God has given you not only great wheels but also the fantastic engine to go to the destination very quickly and a driver who you, you can actually relate to whereas in all the other animal births you have either great wheels or a great engine but no driver no awareness of the driver right making sense yeah. okay good I'm really proud that you're asking all these questions as children. This is human values. That's the awareness that God is wanting us to get through through these Vedas. Not just to only chant. Huh? V-E-D-A, right? Values, educare, devotion, awareness. 
V E D A. Starting first with values, but all the rest of the Maya is starting with the D, devotion. Values comes the third, Deva. When people are caught up in religion, in the fanatism of a religion, it is Deva. But our dharma is Veda. The fanatism about yesterday or somebody, so I was asking, yeah, we were having a conversation about all the thing about the atrociousness of every one of these religions, whether it is Catholics killing the Protestants, whether the Sunnis and the Shiites, I mean, all these different religions, all the subsects are the Shaivites fighting with the Vaishnavites, the Dvaitas fighting with the Advaitas, all this nonsense that is going on is starting with what? D. The D, the devotion has become fanatism. And then there is no value. When the fundamental value is unity in diversity, that's the fundamental essence of the entire Sanatana Dharma put together is actually three words. Unity in diversity. That's the essence of the entire Sanatana Dharma. And that is said in Veda Ekam Sat Vipra Bahudhavadanti Ekam Sat Sat means Yeah the being is the one but the becomings are many the being is one that is awareness that is the truth, the being and what we are caught up is when we recognize that how can we say that the person that is praying to Jesus is different from the person that is praying to Allah the person that is praying to Rama, Krishna, Yehovah whatever, it doesn't really matter because they are all referring to that Sat the ultimate truth of unity in diversity. Now this is most important children because a lot of people then they ask why then in the world that this Hinduism has so many millions of gods, right? It is to experience the God what in the unity there is infinity. Huh? How can it be what you are seeing around you is diversity? You are not seeing anything. You are not seeing unity. Are you seeing unity? You are seeing different, different things. The creation is very different, right? So, that is the diversity you are seeing. But what we miss is, when you only get caught up in the diversity, you miss the point of unity. Then the diversity becomes a thing to enjoy. To really relate to the same divinity in so many beautiful ways. Right? Yeah. Right? How can we actually imagine if everybody looked the same? Imagine that everything looked the same. No beautiful trees, no beautiful flowers, nothing like that existed. What would that be like? Boring. Boring. It would be impossible for the mind to connect to. But the mind is actually connected to the diversity. But when the heart tells the mind, drives the mind, look, you are seeing different, but it is the same. Now, so imagine when you ask to the, the when you look at the gold, that's why Swami says very beautifully, whatever Swami says is incredible, simple, simple and profound. Simple and profound. What does he say? He says, Gold is one, jewelry many. Necklace, ring, earrings, nose ring, everything is made of the same gold but you don't say take a gold coin and put on yourself right you make it into different pieces and you enjoy the beauty of diversity coming out of that stars are many but sky is one cows are many but milk is see how beautifully he's saying this huh but we are all like saying you know different cows only but when we drink the milk, you don't say, "Oh, this cow, this one came from a buff, from a you know white cow. This one came from a you know striped cow." You don't. You drink the milk and you enjoy the milk. Do you say, "Oh, I cannot drink this milk because it came from a dirty looking cow"? Do you say that? My favorite cow is the white cow, and I will drink milk only from a white. No, no, white, black, grey, yellow, brown. All this is external. But when it comes to milk, it is the same. Same thing with the human being. The skin color has changed. 
because you are a white don't feel great because you are actually albino go sleep without a sunscreen in the hot sun in india you will be burned to death you are a mutant wild type is actually black color you are not subjected to any different so i'm not saying that but we all look at oh white people very pretty black people no then what is this nonsense simple ignorance and innocence and god is looking at all this he is saying oh my children and in one way in a way probably is feeling bad i created all this diversity to enjoy myself but these stupid people they are fighting with themselves looking at the diversity i created for them to enjoy god created this diversity for us to actually enjoy appreciate and be connected not for us to fight the beauty of the creation is the diversity okay so why did i say that driving when you're driving yeah it's okay you can take your time to reach the destination but if you really don't want if you don't have too much time you take a flight and go right you don't say let me take the scenic route to go to a business meeting the only business why we are here on this earth is to realize ourselves that's the bottom line and all the activities that we are yesterday what karuna mai was saying you come to temples you go to sai centers you go to all these places they are also stupid people you are falling into politics why did god create this sai center for you to come together and live in unity not to criticize each other and not to live like a stupid life of again fighting what's the point of that why do you go to temple and fall into politics why do you go to a church to plan against some protestants because i am a catholic because mother mary is god the other guy said no she is not god now you are falling fighting with each other it's so pathetic it is really pathetic same thing the purpose of us bhagwan giving this incredible opportunity of this sai center or sai organization is to transform ourselves nothing less nothing more if we get caught up in the same mundane things even if to come into a spiritual place maya same maya is affecting we forget that the center is the epicenter is right here this is the center this is the center we need to connect to when we connect to this center the rest of the center doesn't even really matter you come now you enjoy yourself you are here to experience the divinity srutaye cha srut senaye cha dundubhya nau next one is dundubhyay cha hananyay cha but i will start that next one next uh, sunday we'll continue the class and i think when are the cricket matches over actually <laughs> april 2nd ha uh? oh okay ha huh? that's the final okay by by which time we'll complete rudram <laughs> <laughs> okay hopefully they won't have these uh, you know people will have the pips going on this is the only time overlap with this okay very good thank you. thanks to the world cricket corporation <laughs> <coughs> and uh, but but on a on a serious note i think this is uh, again i am very grateful to all of you that even if one person comes that solid matters because the love and the grace of swami is so immense that he is giving this opportunity to have this satsang and i get benefited by this honestly more than you because for me it's connection to god day in and day out i would not give this up for anything that's the bottom line and uh, well, and when we talk about him when you connect to this inner significance of what we are chanting why we are chanting what does this mean for our own spiritual growth forget about anything else that love and that joy is very different and it also doesn't matter I and mean, i was telling you guys that you should come and learn what you are missing is a golden opportunity how many places in the world can anybody have an opportunity to learn these mantras not even in india my children not even in india on the top of it if he is enabling us to contemplate on his glory through these incredible hymns 
how much more grateful we have to be and that last opportunity time wasted is life wasted and we come back at some point or the other let me assure you you have no other go but to learn this stuff and become the divine that is the destiny no matter whoever it is born everything has to go back to the same destination but we we are avoiding the unavoidable thinking that we can just live this life in this ignorance of mundane activities we are living we are living a life that is avoiding the unavoidable that's the point of this okay om sri sai ram let's close with om and tri shanti om oh.